Hi, my name is Junko Goda, and I am an interpreter with Viz Media here at Anime Expo. I'm going to be asking some questions to Bisco Hattori because she's a little bit shy. Uh, so Orang uh, High School Host Club came about around the time when I was working on Millennium Snow and my editor at that time, uh, we were just throwing around ideas and he brought up, uh, he just threw out themes of these handsome boys at a rich high school. And at that time, there were relationship video games that were pretty popular and also host clubs were popular as well. And uh, during that meeting, Nothing really hit me. I wasn't uh, particularly drawn to a specific genre because um, it was just a brainstorming meeting. But then someone put the words together of, well, what if there's a host club at a high school? And that's when the light bulb went off. And I thought that um, it could be a ridiculously funny manga. So that's how it all started. The first character that came to mind was Tamaki, uh, kind of as the prince. And at first, I got some feedback that he was annoying, but as he progressed throughout the story, uh, he ended up being a very lovable character. Well, first of all, thank you very much for the compliment. Um, uh, the interesting thing about Haruhi was that she just happened to be wearing um, the boy's uniform and it, there was no intention of looking like a boy in the first place. Um, so, so she was always um, not really um, intentionally meeting societal standards of being more masculine. So, um, so for example, she's never rough. But on the flip side, I actually added more subtle, um, subtle poses, but more subtle cute poses instead. And she, and also she always had this intent of doing something for someone. So something that Haruhi would never do would be to be discriminatory against someone. Uh, the moments I especially liked when I look back on the series is at the very beginning of, uh, of each uh, chapter when you enter the host club and uh, Tamaki is wooing his, uh, the other high school girls with some sort of line or two. And when I look back, I'm pretty amazed at how many variations I was able to come up with. And, um, and on the flip side, when I think about more of the serious moments, I'm actually really proud of how, um, how the story of how Tamaki and uh, Kyoya meeting turned out. I'm really fortunate that all of, for all the 26 wonderful episodes of the animation, uh, but if there was one scene I wish made to the animation was the, basically in, in volume 17 when they're trying to get Tamaki to the airport. And when I was drawing that, it was all about speed and the pacing and trying to get him to, you know, rushing to the airport. So I wish that had made it into the anime, but I'm very thankful for uh, the, how it, all the anime came out. Uh, for me, that would be Kyoya, and that would be because I would like to go to different museums and art museums with him, and he could, he could impart his knowledge about the things we see, and I would learn from him. I am definitely surprised that even after um, the series finished in Japan, it's been so many years, but there's so many fans uh, abroad now internationally, so that has been a big surprise. So with Behind the Scenes, I've always been interested in um, watching the making ofs or literally Behind the Scenes. Uh, so, um, so it was already something I was interested in. So. When I visited the uh, Oran Host Club live action, there's a TV drama in Japan, I visited the set and I went up to the props person and said, be my friend. So that's kind of how it all started. And it's also the respect I have for uh, the, these people because they don't 
do it for the money or the glory. They really do it because uh, perhaps they were born to do it. That is their goal in life. So I've really always enjoyed uh, learning more about what happens behind the scenes. I used to be really bad with anything horror related. So even when I went to the uh, video rental store, which there exists, um, you know, at the, they would feature all the horror, horrors right as you walk in and I would completely avoid it. I couldn't even make any eye contact with the, with the covers. But what kind of drew me in was uh, when they are framed as kind of beautiful. So vampires was something that was more accessible for me. And the image I had of a vampire was a little bit more fangirly. So I was able to um, kind of get into the horror genre through vampires that way. In uh, middle school, I was in the tennis club, and when I was in high school, um, surprise, but I was in the manga club, and that's eventually, of course, how I became a, a manga artist. But if, let's say, in high school, there had been some sort of uh, art, cl art club or um, art club for films, I probably would have been doing that by now. What I really love about the shoujo manga genre is that it, it delves into the human condition and just uh, psychology and what goes on in someone's heart. And there is a um, undeniable air when you're in love with someone, when there's a conflict, there's a change in that air and being able to express that in manga, I think is um, a really great um, form for me where I can tell a story. So even if a genre is as specific as fantasy, it always comes down to the human interactions, how people change. So for me, as um, I grew up with reading shoujo manga, so I'll, I always kind of remember how I, as a child, my experiences as a child. So it's been more of a, a natural thing for me to go into shoujo manga. So the characters would be Masa from Behind the Scenes. Uh, so my favorite characters are uh, Tamaki, the twins, and Haruhi. My favorite couples are Tamaki and Haruhi, of course, but I also liked it when Tamaki was the father figure to Haruhi in that stage of their relationship too. So I would say Tamaki, and when I was drawing the uh, Oran Host Club, all the characters, uh, it was pretty effortless. They knew how they wanted to be drawn, they knew how they wanted, what they wanted to say. So it was really um, easy, but out of the entire group, Tamaki was the easiest and fun. So generally, I'm not very disciplined, I don't maintain a regular schedule. So uh, the over, let's say, um, when I'm trying to write a, a section, it'll start out with a storyboard, which is just kind of a broad sketch. And then I'll go into the actual story, and then it goes into the, the artistic nitty gritty of coloring and creating the actual manga. Um, and then finally, there's the more administrative stuff at the tail end. And so when I'm developing this story, that's actually the bottleneck. And I might end up procrastinating a little bit, I guess, um, because I just don't have an idea that hits me right away. So I might just end up lounging around the house or cleaning. And then I'll go to the convenience store to run an errand and then boom, the story hits me. So then I can start my entire um, manga process and uh, which might mean I sometimes pull all-nighters. So this is a schedule I really do not recommend anyone doing. It's not good for your health. And I would eventually like to graduate from this process myself.
So I've been given a longer recharge period, thankfully. So there is nothing yet, uh, but during this time I've been watching a lot of movies and I would like to delve more into the, on the digital side of things. So I've been learning and studying new skills for that. Odon High School Host Club was a really fortunate um, piece of work that I got to work on. For me, I felt like I was just at a desk and that's all I did. But look, it's gone abroad. So um, a really heartfelt thank you to the fans and also to the translator editors um, who uh, made it go international and for everyone who supported that. I hope that you please keep loving all the characters at the Oran High School Host Club. Thank you very much.